I don't know who I am talking to right now, but um, I am actually out here today to say to someone right now that is watching me and you are just at a crossroad and just at that point where you are like, you know, it's over for you. But I want you to know that it can never be over as long as God has the final say in your life. It can never be over as long as God has not said so. God is an extraordinary strategist and he knows how to turn around the circumstances of our lives. So it doesn't matter where you are right now. I just want you to know that it's not yet time to pack up your bags. It's not yet time to, you know, give up because God has a solution to every problem and every challenging situation. So oftentimes, you know, when God is silent, you know, we just think he has left us or he is no longer with us in the storm. But I want you to know that God is never, you know, going to leave you in that storm alone if you are a child of God. So no matter what you're facing, he knows you by your name. He knows where you are right now. He knows what you're going through. And his word makes us to understand that as long as we are here on earth, that we will face tribulations. But he said what? Be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. That was what Jesus Christ said to his disciples before he left. He said, in this world you will have tribulations, you will have challenges, you will go through the test of fire, you will go through the wilderness experience, you will go through you know, the challenges of life that want to break you. But he said, be courageous. He said, cheer up. In other words, don't let it get at you. Just know that even in that situation, I am still with you because I have already overcome for you. Meaning you are going to come out stronger than you went into it because God has made you more than a conqueror and a victor. So no matter what you're going through, cheer up, know that it's not yet over because God has not yet said so. God is able to do exceedingly, even abundantly, more than you ever think or imagine. It's not yet time to pack up your bags. It's not yet time to, you know, say I'm done with all this, you know, and just give up like that. He knows what is best for you and he has a better future for you. There is something in the future, you know that God has already prepared for you. So while you, you, you're thinking he's silent, he's not doing anything about that situation, he's actually, you know, at the back scene, you know, doing something 
extraordinary he's actually at the back you know seeing doing the unexpected and trust me it will surely work out in your favor because god is a master planner and he sure knows how to help you to pull through stay strong child of god be courageous and know that it is never going to work against you because god always has the final say hello everyone out there hello beautiful people out there it's so beautiful to be out here again today i know a lot of people have missed me and a lot of people have been wondering what's going on you know it's been a while she posted and all good um actually i've been very busy and um thank god finally i'm able to sit down now and be able to share a word or two from the scriptures with us and to encourage us you know with the word of god um it's been very busy believe me this year has been my most busy or should i say most busiest <laughs> most busiest year and um actually it is for good you know and um, i thank god for everything because it all works out together for good irrespective of what it is so um, I've been I've been extremely busy and um, I traveled last week and got back over the weekend and um, couldn't you know put up a video but this week I said I must show this my face so a whole lot of people have been missing this face I know a whole lot of my subscribers a whole lot of people who have been there to support me who's got my back you know I know they've been like what's going on here to the extent that someone even had to you know write me to say what's going on daughter of god you know what's happening and then uh, mommy jessila god bless you i got your message and i actually replied you mommy jessila i really appreciate you and thanks very much ma for checking up on me god bless you and may the grace of god upon your life you know um, increase from glory to glory thank you so much ma i appreciate you and i love you so to all my subscribers and to everyone who's got my back everyone who has been there for me everyone who has been out there to support me you know who has been leaving a comment god bless every one of you i appreciate you and i know that god is taking us somewhere and um, for those of you who are actually there also to you know like check go out check go out check go out it is all good keep checking you know but everything going on here is to the glory of god so don't just check check go check go check go check go whatever and um just keep off and on just stay if you want to stay with us stay and be a part of what god is doing here so don't just be a monitoring person god bless you <laughs> so hello beautiful people hello beautiful friends out there hello beautiful children of god out there hello to everyone out there who is watching me right now you are welcome to my motivational and inspirational atmosphere my name is claire and i remain your girl claire so it's been a long time you know but i'm glad to be out here today so today i am actually here to share one or two things from the scriptures with us and um i decided to term my message or should i say the word i am going to what i'm going to talk about today um i termed it as a wake up call and um, when we talk about a wake up call we are talking about you know a call to be at alert you know we are talking about a call you know to be ready get ready you know you wake up be ready for the unexpected you know be ready for whatever you know it's about to take place so a wake up call it's just for you to you know have this um you know let it dawn on you you know that you should be ready be at alert you know so um, i actually turned it a wake-up call because um a whole lot of things actually happen happening in the world that we are in today and um, i know that there are a lot of people out there who don't believe that 
heaven is real and hell is real. A whole lot of people don't even believe in the reality of the word of God. A whole lot of people don't even believe in the reality that um, Jesus lives. A whole lot of people don't believe in the reality that um, God exists. You know, so a whole lot of people, you know, it's like a story. It's not something or should i say fiction so a whole lot of people don't believe that everything that has been said about god you know is true um when i talk about everything i'm talking about the positive things not the negative things so it's true but i want you to know that um god is true he is real like real jesus is real the Holy Spirit of God is real. Heaven is real and hell is real. And the word of God, which is eternal and, you know, unchanging, is real. So I decided to permit uh, or call it a wake-up call because I want um, to wake up someone, you know, from that um, sleep, you know, or should I say that slumber of thinking, you know, oh, everything is cool. I'm just okay where I am right now. I don't need Jesus. I don't need to give my life to Christ. I don't need to have anything to do with the word of God or the or salvation or the life in Christ. I want you to know that there is a day of reckoning. I always say that when I talk about Jesus or heaven and hell here when i talk about the words of salvation i always say that there is a day of reckoning and truly there is a day of reckoning so a whole lot of things have been happening and god is trying to call our attention to the fact that jesus christ is coming soon you know a whole lot of people are like i have a vision or, or a revelation about the rapture you know it's all going on on the internet and but it's all good you know but it doesn't have to take you hearing about other people's um, dream and all that for you to know that this is real. You know, why? Because um, I have also had a revelation about the rapture. I have seen it, a vision about the rapture. It took place and I saw it. It was real. So it is real. I am not saying that the people who are seeing it you know that what they are saying is a lie no what i am saying to you who is thinking you know that oh you know people are saying you know the rapture will take place uh, how come that jesus is coming soon how come you know up till now he's not coming you know we've been hearing this for several years but the truth is that your rapture takes place the very moment you even cease to exist. Your rapture has taken place. Jesus is coming back again. The saints shall be caught up in the sky with him, in the clouds with him. We are going to see him just as he is in the clouds when he descends and, you know, be caught up with him up there. But the truth is that the word of God has been made available for me and for you. For us to know that Jesus Christ is real and that God is real. So I am actually um, trying to make us to understand that it's time for us to, especially if you are a Christian and you are on the low-com side, it's a wake-up call for you to be ready, for you to be prepared, for you to you know um, be at alert because it could happen at any time nobody knows the time like i said before your rapture takes place also apart from him coming back again your rapture takes place to the very moment you seek to exist so for me that is also rapture because once we this life uh, this bread is out or you have ceased breathing then it's over that is your own rapture so it's either you are with god in heaven or you spend eternity with the adversary so i am here today because a whole lot of things believe me have been happening all around the world all around the globe and god is trying to use um 
even the foolish things of this world to draw our attention that Jesus is coming back very soon. Um, for example, I'm going to use the popular celebrities, um, celebrities that we know, um, someone like Kanye West. I am talking about God using the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. You know, this is someone that no one ever thought that someday he was going to talk about Jesus as king, as in Jesus as king, see Jesus as king. Someone who everybody saw as radical, someone who everybody saw as rebellious and all that. But here he is today using his talent that he was using before for the, to promote the kingdom of darkness. Now he is using his talent to promote the gospel, to promote the kingdom of God. And people have said all manner of things, but people don't know that God is trying to call their attention of the word to the end times, to the coming of the Lord. You know, so people have said all manner of things, but if he could give his life to Christ and be used as a vessel in God's hands, who are you? Who are you? You who is there, you know, saying God is not real. I mean, this is someone who has seen it all. He's got the money, but he has come to realize that money can't buy you eternal life. Money can't save you from going to hell. And your money or the riches of this world can give you joy and happiness. That can be found in God and God alone. And um, now we see someone again like Justin Bieber. I'm going to put um, the video, the interview, right? The interview he had, you know, some time ago out there. This is someone everybody, you know, knows that he has made it. He's got the money. He's successful. He, he was successful in his career, was just at the peak of his career. Why am I saying this? People are going through challenging times. People are going through so, so much. Sometimes we see people, you know, outwardly, they look like everything is fine because of the flashy things they have. But right inside them, some of them are depressed. Some of them are lonely. Some of them ha don't have joy. Some of them don't have happiness you know a whole lot of people you see people today they just you know look good but inside people are hot and people are, are, are you know giving up on daily basis people are going through depressing times people are going through a whole lot of things you know and then um, oftentimes they don't want to say it out they don't even you know want to tell anyone what they are going through so but those who are able to you know embrace christ in that situation, thank God for their lives. They end up receiving the gift of eternal life before it's too late. While some just call it quits and just give up and some save their lives. So I am actually out here to make us to understand that a whole lot of things are going on right now. And these are things that God is using to call our attention. I see all those um, circumstances happening around us as you know, a wake-up call for everyone to be alert. If you are still doubting that eternity, you know, with God or with the adversary is of uh, fiction, I want you to know that it is real. The Word of God said so, and it is so. So, make up your mind today. This is a wake-up call going on all around the world. In January, we, we all heard about what happened to the great athlete and um, Kobe Bryant, unexpected, just like that. And somehow I got to know that his name means God is at the door. God is at the door. What does that tell you? God is at the door. He passed on in January, you know, so pathetic, you know, so painful, you know. His death, that also took, you know, the life of the daughter, an air crash that took the life of the daughter and some other people also. God is at the door. That's, may his soul actually rest in peace. Um, if he was born again, to so God be the glory. Heaven is his home. If he was not born again, I don't know. God knows better. But I heard he was in church that morning 
in a Catholic church. Well, he is gone. His own story here on earth, irrespective of how he's immortalized, irrespective of how people keep talking about, you know, the good things he did here on earth. The truth is that he is now on the other side and we don't know where exactly, only God knows. But for you who is still breathing, for you who is still alive, for you who is still here on earth, make up your mind if you haven't received Jesus Christ to embrace the gift of salvation. Make up your mind you know, to be a part of this great family of God before it is too late. Like I said, your rapture could be you season to exist you know so it's not only when jesus appears in the cloud and we go up there you know we get caught up with him up there so i am going to quickly take us to the book of revelation chapter one let's see what revelation chapter one from verse seven says um i'm reading the new king james version first it says behold he is coming with clouds and everyone, oh sorry, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. In other words, so be it. Amen. It says, and even they who pierced him. It's not talking about those who pierced him several years ago. It's talking about those who have heard the gospel, those who have heard about him. You know salvation what he did on the cross yet they refuse to acknowledge him to identify with him or to confess him and accept him as their lord and savior it says those people will mourn because the bible makes us to understand that on that last day there will be what the gashing of the teeth people will be in tears those who are not born of god those who did not receive christ while they were here on earth who will be cast into the lake of fire he said there will be there in the lake of fire in hell the gashing of teeth so he says and those who even pierced him in other words those who refuse to acknowledge him as their lord and personal savior those who you know turn deaf ears to the words of salvation and to the words of eternal life he says they will mourn because of him, because they will see him, even so, because of what is going to happen. Because those who believe will be caught up in the clouds with him. But those who don't believe will be here to face the Antichrist, which, you know, was talked about or is talked about in the book of Revelation, the Antichrist. If you go down, it says in verse 8, he says, I am the Alpha and Omega glory. He says, I am the beginning and the earth. And says the Lord, who is, who is, I am in the presence, who is, and who was, I am in the past, but yes, existing. I was, in other words, who was, but still is existing. And who is, to come the almighty he said who is to come talking about the present the uh, cont uh, con present continuous tense which means he is coming back again talking about jesus appearing in the clouds for us to be caught up with him in the clouds let's see what the amplified version says because i love amplified it says behold he's coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes, all the nations of the earth. In other words, everyone will see him up there. He says, and they will mourn over him, realizing their sin. Now we see why it says they will mourn. He says, because they will realize their sin and their guilt. And anticipating the coming wrath. Like I said, there is a day of reckoning. There is a day when the anger of God and the wrath of God will be kindled, you know, against those who never believed in him. He says, so it is to be. 
Amen. In other words, so shall it be. It has been written. It has been ordained to be so that he is coming back again. And that those who do not believe in him, when the time comes, they will gash their teeth. They will regret it. You know, they will realize their sin and their guilt. Verse 8 says, I am the Alpha and Omega. Glory. The beginning and the end, says the Lord. He says, who is existing forever and who was continually existing in the past in other words he's still existing even in the past and who is to come the almighty the omnipotent and the ruler of all he is the ruler of all so he is coming back again um i read i already read the new king james version so there's no need reading the king james version you know so that is what it says to us then if you go to first thessalonians 4 17 it says then we first thessalonians 4 17 then we which are alive for those of us who are alive right now it says and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds who are they those who have gone ahead of us because they will resurrect he says and we will be what caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. I am reading the King James Version. He says we will be caught up with them, with those, the saints who have who will resurrect, and then we will meet with the Lord in the air. Oh God, what a beautiful sight is going to be! What an amazing and glorious sight is going to be to see the Lord Jesus. He says. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Make up your mind to be a part of the stream. Make up your mind to be a part of this uh, beautiful, you know, crowd that will see the Lord on the of uh, Jesus as He appears in the cloud and be ready to be caught up to be raptured because it's going to be terrible if you are not caught up in the sky because the bible makes us to understand the predicaments and the things that will happen after that you know the reign of the antichrist and all that so be ready you know be ready be at alert wake up from your slumber wake up right now behold he is coming back again look he's coming back again be at alert he's coming back again pay attention to this he's coming back again be ready he is coming back again so you know that's what the scriptures tells us he is coming back again and we will be caught up with him in the sky then let's see what amplified bible says the same first thessalonians 4 17 it says then we who are alive and remain on the earth will simultaneously be cut up, raptured. It uses the word now, raptured. The uh, Amplified Bible says, raptured together with them, the, who are they, the resurrected ones, like I said before, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord forever. God has spoken to the word through prophets, through even people who are prophets, you know, people have reached out with the word of God. People have proclaimed the gospel. People have talked about how real Jesus is. People have shared the word of God, you know, these words of eternal life. So are you still procrastinating? Are you still someone out there and you're saying, this is not real. I don't believe, you know, that this is true. The day of reckoning is coming. And believe me, the rapture of the church is going to take place. The rapture, when I say the church, means the rapture of everyone who is a part of the family of God. The rapture of everyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to happen. And when it happens, are you going to be a part of it? Are you going to be caught up in the sky with the Lord Jesus? Make up your mind to be a part of it. So many things are going on today in the world. And when you read the scriptures, all these things you already said, in the last days, what will happen? How men will be lovers of themselves? How men will be rebellious and all that? A whole lot of things. The evil, the atrocities going on in our world today. I mean, just hearing of all these things going on, you just know that his coming is at hand. God is at the door. He's knocking at the door of your heart. Will you open up your heart today and receive him? Or are you still saying no tomorrow? Tomorrow might be too late. 
Accept him today. Let him be the Lord of your life. Accept him as your Lord and your personal Savior. You have nothing to lose. There is a light beyond here. There is light, either in eternity with God or in eternity with the devil, the adversary. He's got nothing to offer. Everything we see today in the world, you know, that is negative, all proceed from the kingdom of darkness. God is love. And everything about God, you know, is real. Whatever has been written about God is great. There, there is a musician, a gospel singer that said, Everything written about you is great. He's a great God. And he loves you for who you are. Come just as you are. Come just believing and, you know, opening up your heart to receive the gift of eternal life, which Jesus demonstrated on that cross when he sacrificed his life, laid down his life so that we can be also called the begotten of God. He is the first begotten of God. And we are also today the sons and daughters of God. Before he went to the cross, he was the only begotten. But the Bible makes us to understand that after his death and his resurrection, and after the free uh, gift of salvation has been made available to all, everyone who receives him has become the begotten of God. Because John chapter 1 verse 12 says, As many as received him, he gave the power to become the sons of God. Power there say, means the right, you know, to become a child of the most high God. So if you accept him, if you receive him, as many as received him, no matter your age, no matter your race, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, if you receive him, if you come to Jesus just the way you are, accept him as your Lord and personal Savior, you have the right, then you are a child of God once you do that. So receive him today and be saved. And be a part of that train that will sing glory, glory, hallelujah, when we see him appear in the clouds. So it's a wake-up call, remember that? Whatever is going on around the world today is a wake-up call. For us all to be at alert, he's coming back again. God bless you. And remember, Jesus loves you and wants you saved. God bless you. I don't know if I'd be alive for sure. It was dark, really dark. So I'm very, very grateful to have influences in my life that have played a huge part in me seeing their relationship with Jesus and their relationship with their wives and their relationship with their kids and saying, that's what I want mm. and um, striving after that. So Jesus wasn't this religious elite guy that you know came to um, but he was he was in the dirt and uh, he found me in my dirt and pulled me out Like I said before I'm I'm a Jesus follower and uh, I just want to be led by when you accept Jesus He says that now you walk with the Holy Spirit. So I think I just want to be led by by the Holy Spirit We're not really good at the end of the day at the core. I don't believe I don't believe the humans are good and people might you know twist this and make me seem like I'm saying humanity is not good. Tell I don't know. But Tell you the truth. I just feel like at the core, I fight every day temptation and things that, you know, are instinctive to do, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, lie, be greedy, all these things that just naturally come, those naturally come. I got to fight to not be that. So uh, maybe humanity's, you know, it's it's come to a place of being really, you know, it's it's broken. I mean, it's just just look around i mean the pain in this world it's just so it's like it's obvious and uh people are looking for hope and they're looking for 
a way out and they're looking for an escape and they're looking for um they're looking for truth and they're looking for um yeah and i'm just uh i've gotten the opportunity um with my journey to just see a god who's accepts me loves me um they call him the savior um and i believe that to be true mm. that jesus saved me just didn't know what the heck was going on and so i really took a deep dive in my faith to be honest i just went deep into like i believed in jesus but i never really like you know when it says following jesus is actually turning away from sin mm. and so there's no what, what it talks about in the bible it's like there's no obedience there's no faith without obedience so it's like i had faith about like oh i believe jesus died on the cross for me but i never really implemented it mm. into my life i never like was like I'm going to be obedient. So when did you decide to actually move within the guidelines and how did you find yourself away from, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but I'm going to drink or do drugs or sleep around or what all these other distractions. Yeah. How did you get out of that world? What was the turning point for you? I think it was my perception of who Jesus really was. You know, um, I had really bad examples of Christians in my life uh, who would say one thing and do another. So they were the, my direct example of who Jesus was. That's why you didn't take it seriously. I didn't take it as seriously because I didn't have good examples. Good role models. They, yeah. The way I look at my relationship with God and with Jesus is I'm not trying to earn God's love by doing good things. God has already loved me for who I am mm -hmm. before I did anything to earn and deserve it. It's a free gift by accepting Jesus and just giving your life to him and what he did is the gift the forgiveness is the thing that we look at him you know i'm going to worship you god because you gave me something so good do you think that if you hadn't redefined what jesus was and reclaimed it into something that was worthy of practice for you mm -hmm. which then led you on a path of reconciliation with your wife mm -hmm. do you think the person that you, the you of then was on a path of self-destruction do you feel that you were on a self you were self-destructing oh for sure yeah, I would have for sure, 100%. Yeah.